Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Psychology of Better Call Saul. Today I'm going to talk about Jimmy in Season 6 and the way he has formed a codependent relationship with Kim. Jimmy seems to be a man who has moved away from making his own decisions in life and is instead moving closer to a need for constant approval by Kim. With that being said, let's get into the analysis. In Episode 1, we see Jimmy and Kim about to get ready for the day. Kim talks about her upcoming day at work and everything she needs to do. She then asks Jimmy about what he has planned, and he responds, same thing, huge day. Although Jimmy barely has anything going on for himself that day, evidenced by sitting in an empty courtroom by himself to pass the time, he believes he can't differ from how Kim feels about the day, because it might lead to conflict or strife. It's all a lie but it keeps things going nice and orderly. They soon leave the apartment, and Kim is holding the recently shot up world's second best lawyer mug. Perhaps Jimmy would have held onto it if it was his choice, but Kim, being the protector and mother figure that she is, throws it into the trash can. She is aware that it is evidence and can derail their future plans. Even when he is not asking for it, Kim is the one who makes the big decisions for the two of them. Later in the episode, while eating at the Mexican restaurant, Jimmy shows Kim the rental car and she is immediately disappointed. She questions why Saul Goodman would drive a Ford Taurus and begins talking about how he should drive something with more flair, something more showy. She then mentions how he needs an office to serve as his cathedral of justice. Jimmy hadn't considered any of this before, but now that Kim is showing interest in the ideas, it means Jimmy will show interest as well. Kim is planting seeds for Jimmy's future life, as we soon see Jimmy attempt to lease an office. At the same time, he will eventually begin driving the showy American Cadillac that is featured in Breaking Bad. We are seeing the slow progression of Jimmy's independence being taken over, while dependence on Kim reigns supreme. Whatever Kim wishes or desires must be what Jimmy also wishes and desires. Minutes later, she brings up the Howard prank again, and Jimmy is hesitant to move forward. But when he sees her reaction to his hesitancy, and the way it makes her uneasy, he instantly becomes uneasy himself, and must squash this negative feeling. He has no choice but to give in and hear out her ideas on the next action. At the end of episode 2, we see Jimmy and Kim go to meet with the Kettlemans at their office. Jimmy believes he is in charge when entering the room even asking Kim if she is sure she wants to come in. He talks to the Kettlemans and tries to dissuade them from making any drastic moves. Jimmy is primarily using money as a bargaining chip, but when his tactics aren't working, Kim steps in and gives them the stick. Jimmy's face tells it all as he is most likely feeling ashamed and embarrassed about Kim's actions, as he would never take things to that extreme by threatening the Kettlemans with jail time. But at the same time, he knows he can't challenge Kim because it would cause a rift, so he needs to just sit there and take it. Jimmy is afraid to say anything or speak out as it is most critical for him to make Kim happy and keep the relationship afloat. Ultimately, his own happiness depends on Kim being satisfied. In episode 3, back at the apartment, Jimmy is mapping out the scam on Howard. Post-it notes displaying the precise nature of everything. They need to figure out how to get the stunt done with Howard's car, and Kim mentions attempting to steal the car to make it work. Jimmy is once again hesitant and states that it's risky, while Kim rephrases his words and calls it audacious. Kim has begun doing this often, in which she twists Jimmy's words around so that they better fit the narrative she is shooting for. He might think it's adorable, while in actuality it's highly manipulative. Stealing the car is against his better judgment, and he seems determined in his words. But then he turns to Kim and sees her fawning over the corkboard. It's as if this stunt means everything to her. A few seconds later, he changes his mind and finds a way to make it work. He is constantly denying his own interests and choices in favor of decisions that will help subdue Kim's anxiety. A truly difficult job. Jimmy is lying to both himself and Kim about the truth all the time, just as he has utilized lying throughout the show to create his persona. Lying allows for him to conceal his true self from hurt, 
while also preventing the charade that is their relationship from deteriorating. Then in episode 4, we're seeing the ways his codependency is impacting his surrounding world, as the choices he has recently made have driven the court employees to blackball Jimmy. As often happens in these types of relationships, an individual ends up making so many decisions in favor of their partner that eventually it alienates them from other meaningful relationships in the world. Kim is responsible for guiding many of his choices, particularly regarding Lalo and the decision not to speak with the DA, as she labels Jimmy a potential snitch if he did speak with them. In codependency, the individual often becomes more distant from friendships and family, while becoming more reliant and dependent on their partner. And as their isolation and loneliness increase, their reliance on their partner intensifies. The court used to be a place where Jimmy was known and where he was involved in somewhat positive relations, something that would aid anyone in feeling like a real person. But as this changes, his sense of reality and who he is becomes almost completely oriented towards Kim and her views. Then in the end of the episode, Jimmy shows Kim the location of his new office. Jimmy seems excited for things, and seemingly positive about the outlook despite the circumstances. Before Kim gives her two cents, he is ready to go, making choices of his own free will. But soon Kim speaks up and gives several negative comments. We only see Jimmy's face for a second, but we get the impression that he's ready to drop it all and find a new office as a result of her words. But then Kim proceeds to point out some positives, and once again, all things are fine including the decision to leave the toilet in the middle of the office. His feelings about himself, his choices, and things in the world are dependent on Kim's own feelings, a fact Jimmy is completely unconscious of throughout. In episode 6, we see Jimmy going to a liquor store to celebrate their eventual victory over Howard. But Jimmy at this point is not so much elated because of what will happen to Howard, but rather due to the way that it is making Kim jump for joy. He's ready to buy a bottle of their favorite tequila, a symbol of what originally brought them together. When he sees Judge Casimiro and realizes things may become spoiled, Jimmy has an intense emotional reaction, yelling and becoming furious in his car. And of course, the first thing he does is call Kim to explain the circumstances. He is not upset for his own personal reasons, but due to the way it will impact Kim's own emotional state. He even hesitates to make the call, seemingly dreading it because he knows how upset she will be. He tells her they can do it another day, attempting to calm her down, but he is wholly unable to help and she turns the car around to finish things that day. And most certainly it will happen that day, because Jimmy is no longer at the helm. Kim is the one calling all the shots. Finally in episode 7, Jimmy is with his video production team from the university. We are seeing a similar situation to what we have seen all throughout the show, with Jimmy directing and leading the crew. But things soon change when Kim shows up and it's as if the executive producer has arrived on set. Jimmy says he can handle it on his own, but Kim is not hearing it, and Jimmy can't refute it. We see Kim in the background making the biggest shots and calls, furiously running in order to complete the project. Jimmy may believe this is his film, but in reality, he's only the puppet that is being controlled by Kim's wishes. Eventually, they get the photos and Howard is embarrassed in front of his firm. This leads to Jimmy and Kim making out while listening to the phone call. But look closer at the blurred focus and we see Kim on top of Jimmy indicating that she most likely initiated the intimacy due to the adrenaline rush it provided her. Once again, Jimmy allows Kim's feelings to dictate the state of their relationship, allowing himself to be dominated in the sexual act as Kim is needing to celebrate following her personal victory. This concludes this episode on the psychology of Better Call Saul. Next video coming up is on Kim. Thanks for watching.